In a previous video, I talked about conductors, and specifically about how metals are great conductors of electricity and heat. But I also showed you some materials that were not good conductors. Materials like plastic, wood, and rubber are poor conductors of electricity and heat. But there's actually a word for materials like this that slow down the flow of electricity and heat. They're called insulators, and they have many important uses of their own. Electricity travels through metal wires, but those metal wires are usually covered in plastic. This plastic is flexible, so it bends with the wires, and plastic is also a good insulator of electricity. This insulation keeps the wires from touching, which could cause a short circuit, and it also protects people and animals from being electrocuted. Plastic, rubber, and wood are also good examples of thermal insulators. Utensils made of wood and plastic can be placed into boiling water, but because heat does not flow through these materials easily, you can hold on to them while you cook without worrying that they'll get too hot to touch. Some utensils that are made of metal actually have rubber or plastic handles. Even though the metal heats up easily, the handle is made from an insulator that stays cool enough to touch. Metals like steel, aluminum, and copper are poor insulators of heat and electricity. They are not good insulators, but that's because metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. They allow heat and electricity to flow right through them. Being a good conductor makes something a bad insulator. And materials that are good insulators, like plastic and rubber, they slow down the flow of electricity and heat, so they are bad conductors. Conductors and insulators are opposites. Earlier, I conducted a simple, experimental investigation using the equipment you see here. I placed equal volumes of hot water into two identical aluminum cans. One of the cans was placed into a foam koozie. The foam will act as an insulator of thermal energy. Then I used a thermometer to measure the initial temperature of the water in each can. In both cans, the initial temperature of the hot water was 88 degrees Celsius. After I measured the temperature of the water in each can, I left them alone for several minutes before measuring the temperature of the water again. So here's your question. After several minutes, which can will hold the warmest water? Will the water be warmer in the can with the koozie? Or will the water be warmer in the can without the koozie? Take a minute and discuss that with your classmates, then I'll be back to talk about the answer. At the beginning of this investigation, the temperature of the water in both cans was the same, a warm 88 degrees Celsius. But after several minutes, the temperature in each can was significantly different. The temperature of the water in the can with the koozie was 72 degrees Celsius, while the water in the can without the koozie was at a temperature of about 66 degrees Celsius. So the water in the can with the koozie stayed warmer. That's because insulators slow down the flow of heat. Now, normally I use a koozie like this to keep heat from getting into a can and warming up a cold drink, but it actually works the other way too. This foam koozie insulated the can and slowed down the heat that was trying to escape the can. So it kept that heat inside and the water stayed warmer. Insulators slow down the flow of heat trying to go either way. And that's why I can use the same koozie or thermos or cooler to keep my hot things hot and my cold things cold. Insulators slow down the flow of heat. I'm sure this is what you and your classmates came up with, so keep up the great work, and I'll see you next time.